So, next components. That one. That one. And this spring. I normally advance the wheel here. I don't believe it, the battery's going flat again. I must have a bad battery here. Sorry about that. Back with a freshly charged battery. Let's see how we can get on here. So, this drive dog goes on here. Now the side upwards is the one with the recessed recess in it. Flat side to the bottom, recess to the top. We have this coil spring. Big side to the bottom, it's sort of conical. The larger diameter the larger diameter to the bottom, smaller diameter to the top is the answer for that. Here we have this cam, this ratchet cam. Now, with our shaft here sitting fairly neutral, it's not under any spring tension, I find that if I start with this cut out, at about this point or about here, that works out well. I'll end up with good return spring tension. So let's just push on. I rotate it, it'll pick up that drive dog and I can let it revolve back to position. We can pop the drive gear on the top of that. Now, yeah. we need to fit this lever, this lock lever, and so we need to use the correct spring for that. There are two springs, and they look very much the same. One of them is for the lock lever. The other one does the film release lever on the top of the body. And the one for the film release lever is slightly smaller in diameter. And it fits that tube there. The other one, well that one does too, just to trick me. Normally that one doesn't. The other way you can tell them apart is the longer one. The longer one normally is the one for the film release button. The shorter one is normally the one for our um, lock lever. So I'm just going to put a tiny smear of molybdenum grease down that hole. That's where the lock lever goes. There. This light's not playing the game, is it? Here. We'll drop our spring down there. Take our lock lever. Pop that into position. Make sure it moves up and down smoothly. No catching. And this component goes on next. This transmits the action from the film advance through to the cocking rack. I want to lubricate the this um, little gear here, that idler gear. So I'm just applying some grease and I'll squash that in, squash it in, and it should pack in. 
and it doesn't need much of course it just needs a touch just to make sure it's not dry so fitting this basically it just drops on the top you can see the idler gear meshes with the gear on the top of the film advance there's a tab on this bracket that sits on top of our lock lever to stop it getting away now if I position this carefully I can see my three screw holes and we'll get the screws in place we have two plain screws they are slightly round headed rounded head on those screws one at the end checking everything's in place and one here which is a bit more awkward to get into position just run those screws in I'm not tightening them up our third screw goes here in this position that holds that spring for this lever we find our spring and we find our screw that screw's got a step on it where it fits over the spring we'll get that spring in place That's better. Run that screw down lightly. Make sure that the spring is not trapped, that it can revolve freely around there. If that's all good, we can lock up our three screws. And we need to hook this spring into place. Now to press the lock lever, get it right down flat against the body, lift up the end of the spring and position it behind the lock lever so that it pushes the lock lever like that. So our lock lever is in place. We need to fit our spacer, that spacer ring needs to go on, this pops on the top. We want to fit our cocking rack next, so I'm going to lubricate the cocking rack, just take a little bit of grease and just wipe a, a smear on both faces around the teeth and a bit on the teeth doesn't hurt but you don't need much the rack's going to fit in from the end here let me see if I can deal with the contrast a bit let's get rid of that the camera reacts to the sunlight off the paper and then we get nowhere alright so we have to tension our advanced shaft yeah get that spring back in place if you look at this cam this end cut out here that's our start position we've got no spring tension there though so we need to advance it one full turn so I hold back that lock and I'm going to rotate this one full turn and there we are, we're back where we were but that shaft is now under tension 
of the spring. I'm going to fit my advanced lever, push it on the top. We hold back, push down our lock lever, just push it down. That releases the advance, allows you to advance the film. And we can advance that right round. I'm going to feed in the cocking rack. Now, as it comes to round to the cutout here, we just go beyond that point and I can feel the cocking rack. I'm just giving very light tension on it with my finger. I can feel it drop into place, pick up on the gear. And I'm looking at the position I've got it, at the rest position against that stop. I can see quite a bit of space there, it's more than an eighth of an inch. More than three millimetres. We want about half that. So I'm going to press the lock lever down again. Advance the film advance again, right round, keeping a little bit of light tension on my finger on the end of that rack, and then I feel it click in one more tooth. And when I look at my rest position now, it's down to about two millimetres, but more than a sixteenth of an inch. That's ideal. So now the advance can't go anywhere because the cocking rack prevents it from rolling back any further than that. If you swing that advance relever right round, you will get to the point where it'll spit that cocking rack right out. And that's because there's nothing stopping it from revolving further because we don't have the um, frame counter spring installed here, which otherwise limits the travel. So I'm going to press my lock lever down, bring the lever around to the rest position, press my lock lever down to unlock this. And just bring my lever around here to 90 degrees. That's a good start position. Just looking at what I've got in front of me. Good. I know what I've got here. There were changes to how the advanced mechanism, mechanism was made on the Retina 2A's two, two and 1A cameras. This is the more common and later arrangement. They only differed slightly in detail. They weren't... But they're... This is certainly the later and more common one. Right, so I've popped that spring into place. Now, take a note. That shaft, the pin on that spring, fits in there. That corner, not round here. If you put it round there, nothing's going to work. In fact, you can break things, so just don't do it. Right, so I've got to assemble my frame counter. And I normally use... A little bit of grease here to sort of glue stuff together. So I put a bit of grease on the top, stick this section to it. Now this section almost certainly will have a lightly scratched line across it. Now that's got an interesting purpose. It's to tell you which way around this disc fits. And it's to point towards the number one. So I'm just going to put a little smear of grease on the back of this. Assembly grease you can call this. And make sure that the one points in that general direction. And this just clips into that notch too. It's, there's a notch there that it fits into. There we have it. We have a spring here which fits underneath all of that and I'm making sure that I've got some grease on that don't need much that fits into the back of that frame counter section we've got here's our top for the frame counter this all fits over the top of it if you lower it carefully into place it won't disturb anything here we go You'll notice there's a hole there that locates it, that little pinhole. That locates with that pin on that post there. And you need to revolve it to make sure it does. That's in place. Now holding very light pressure with my finger on the top here, I revolve that dial clockwise until I hear it drop into place with a loud click. And at that point, 
the ratchets are both working. There's, there's effectively two points that come into contact with that. One does the counting of the dial and the other one is the end of film. They both need to be in place. So the stir washer goes in. Our pinhead screw goes in. And I'm keeping this dial held down with my fingers so that it doesn't get out of place. If you allow it to pop up, you'll have to rotate it again to get that ratchet back into place. I'm just checking that's all good. That's good. I'm not doing that spring up screw up too tight. End of uh, file size message there, I think. So I'm just saying that I'm watching here to make sure that the frame counter is advancing properly. Here I'm pressing the release lever. That would be pressed down by the shutter release button normally. And that's advancing normally. The frame counter is working perfectly. So that's all good. We can't advance the, re the advanced lever so far that the rack can pull out because it's now correctly timed. And the advanced lever won't turn around past that normal stop position. So that's all good. Now this action here. As you advance the film, you can see the lock lever. It's at the lower position. It's pressed downwards. As we advance the film advance here, it'll swing. The film advance moves around until the lock lever reaches a cutout in that disc. And that allows it to pop upwards under spring tension from that spring we put drop down into the body. And then it's on the top ratchet. Well, the top ratchet only allows the lever to return to the rest position. It doesn't allow you to go back and move the lever forward again. So here we are. This is, this is the point the film advance would be with the shutter cocked and ready to go. When you fire the shutter, the shutter release shaft bears on this pushes it down until this cam, this lock lever, drops to the bottom ratchet. And again, it can only, the lever can only move in the advanced position that way. And as it pops it up at the end of the stroke, it can only return to the rest position. And that's what prevents you being able to inch the film along as you can do with a lot of later cameras. All the advance has to be done in a single stroke. Otherwise you're left with the lever sticking out there and it won't come back until you complete the stroke. So I'm just checking the action of this film advance. The counter's working positively. Everything here is popping up normally. It's looking good. I'm going to apply a little bit of grease to the ratchet. This is just so it will continue to run smoothly. So both the upper ratchet and the lower ratchet on that wheel. And for good luck, I'll put a little bit on the end of that lock lever. That's a very good positive action. Well, I think we can put the uh, rewind shaft and uh, bush back on the camera. So I'll just check that there's no moisture in the end of this.
and put a smear of grease on this. And this feeds up from the bottom of our rewind lever. Now there's a cutout in there that matches the tab on the end of that, so you get those aligned. There we have it, you can see it's sticking up. For our bush here, I'm just going to use some of that graphite grease. I could have used the other one, but I like this one better for this particular purpose, because it is better at sticking to the metal than the synthetic. And I'm going to pop this back on there. Now I'm just going to very carefully lift some of the tension off this piece of the bush. That's the spring that holds this thing in place. So that it'll slide over the end of that shaft easily. There we go. That's it. Now, as you see it there, that's the normal position that this would be in when the camera film has been rolled through the camera. Um, it should be relatively free but it's not exactly loose, um, otherwise it would be rattling about. I'm just going to pop the rewind knob on here, just screw that onto the shaft, and I'm just checking the action here to make sure that's working. That's good. So when you go to pull up the rewind knob, you pull it up part of the way, that allows you to get a good grip on the knob for rewinding the film. When you pull it up all the way, it pulls the whole shaft out of the film cassette, allows you to remove the cassette from the camera. If you do pull it up all the way and you drop your knob back down. It looks like it's sitting at much the same position it would have been, but of course this is not engaged with the film cassette and you won't be able to rewind anything. If you do manage to pull it all the way out, you can have to push it all the way back down in again until this engages with the film cassette to rewind your film. And then start again, just pull it up slightly. Sometimes people get messed up with that. Right, so that's all good and that can be screwed to the top of the camera. So we've got three screws, countersunk head screws, the same size as was used to fit the bush for the film advance shaft, same size as was used to fit the tripod socket at the base of the camera except these screws are not hidden when you remove the top of the camera so these are where the cleanest and shiniest screws normally live oh will you look at that that screw's got a little bit of paint on it or not paint glue so i know that came from the base of the camera i'm going to swap that one back those screws up tight and retrieve that screw from the bottom of the camera. Now when I was looking at the screws in that tripod socket, two of them had definitely got glue on them. One of them I thought might have done and so I assigned it for that position. But as it turns out, that was not it. So that one there, let's have it out. Replace it with the one with a spot of glue on it. Oh, this magnetic screwdriver is uh, catching me out. There we go. Put that back where it was. Let's put our little cover on there again to stop that leather from floating around. Here we go, we've recovered our screw from where it was and we can put it where we want it. So 
so far so good now the shutter release let's see about that making sure there's no moisture in there yeah normally I use a bit of molybdenum just run it inside there take a bit of molybdenum not as much as that just a smear just a tiny smear you need hardly any of this these two holes this one for the shutter release sharp this one for it, the post The spring fits over the post. That collar fits over the main shaft like that. Now that spoke that little washer that little shim spacer that goes on now so what I'm going to do is just put a little bit of molybdenum paste on the shaft it goes here I'll put that washer in place and you can possibly see it down there just there. Now I can slide my shutter release into place, making sure the spring doesn't fall off, and it sits just like that. And you can see the washer between this component and the shutter release component here and it just takes up a bit of space not all cameras will have it but if the cameras have got it and you lose it you're going to be in trouble so we have the release shutter release button and I'm just going to put a little tiny smear of grease on that so it retains its collar that spacer collar that sits on the top so there we have it I'll see if I can get you in closer to have a look at that action. Right, so as I advance the film, you can see the action. And you see the release lever pop up to the other cam. And as I press the shutter release, you'll see it press down on that release lever. And press and it takes it down to the bottom ratchet. And at that point, the film advance is free to cock the shutter again. So this action happens as you fire the shutter. So in, ideal, in an ideal world, the shutter would have fired at exactly that point and allow you to wind on to the next frame. The film advance is locked, ready to take a shot. You depress the shutter release and it drops that cam to the bottom section and which is allows you to advance the film. Once it reaches the end of the stroke, that cam pops back up to the top section. Our next task is to clean um, and refit the rangefinder to the top of the camera body. So I'll pop this to one side and we'll get on to that. <laughs> 